A very good afternoon and welcome back to the Touchline on Y254. My name is Max Olwasiki. We're talking matter sports this particular afternoon and joining me is robust duo. People have been actively involved in marketing and business aspect of the game. Yvonne Namomai, a reputable sports market alongside Ronald Okoth, founder and CEO of Rosma Limited. Yvonne, good to speak to you. Good to have you once again. The last time you were on this particular show was, I think, towards the end of last year. Yes, yes, yes. How is the going? The going is very good and um, of course as a Man U supporter today we are hoping to use Man United as a case study of what our local sports federations can actually adapt the structures that they can put in place to ensure their sustainability. Objectivity though? Yes. <laughs> Ronald Okoth, <laughs> how have you been man? I'm good, and you? Easy, I'm alright. Yeah. Good to have you on board but yeah. you're looking... Uh, Elegant as usual, <laughs> and in suit, despite my earlier warning to you that when you come to this particular show, uh, you no. don't need to look nicer than I am. No, I'm just from having a closed door meeting with the, uh, some partners, so uh. definitely I just had to put on my coat. But next time you will heed to my advice, right? Uh, definitely. <laughs> to my warning. <laughs> Yvonne, as we speak right now, the fourth leg of HSBC World 7 Series, mm. this small performance from Kenyan side, the Sevens national team, of course, having been beaten all the group fixtures. What's the long-term solution and business aspect of the game? Let's start with rugby. Yeah, um, the, the long-term solution will always be complementing both the player and career development pathway. Uh, we see many people uh, talking about money issues and... Um, you have to remember that the same coach that has the team in Sydney Sevens right now, Paul Morunga, was in charge of our under-19 side for the longest time. An under-19 side that was mad by scandals of age cheating and everything, you know. So it exposes our a uh, very huge gap in terms of consistency in developing the next uh, stars uh, that will play or represent the country at, uh, at that level of uh, competition. So apart from... Um, the normal talk about sponsors and all the politics around strikes, we need to uh, objectively look at the player development pathway, identify all these gaps. Because even when it comes to revenue generation, the avenues for revenue generation will be derived from that pathway. So the technical, technical guys should look at that uh, player development pathway, complement it. Then their needs, the needs that will arise from developing the next seven star will actually expose for marketers avenues where they can actually get uh, or rather collect revenue from. Ronald Okoth, I know you've played football for Gormaya for Madara United. You have a company that is seeking to uh, market the game and make the game sort of business. Do you think football is business as you speak right now? Of course, you have our very own players playing overseas and yes. getting professional victim, Gubi Wanyama, playing for Spurs. But locally, do you think it's getting replicated? Well, I think uh, it's a good question. I think uh, currently I don't think we really consider football as business such. Because if you look at the way we are running our, our, our house, I think we, we, we still have a long way to go. There's still a huge gap between maybe players and all the stakeholders maybe taking advantage of uh, the football side of, of things so that at least we can make our, our football real business. Just the other day I was speaking to one of the CEOs in one of the, the big teams that we have and he was telling me that uh, we still have a long way to go. He actually admitted it and him being the CEO of the, of the, the, same, big lab, the same big club that uh, we know. Most of us, you know, we look up to them. He told me that uh, one, one challenge that we, Kenya is facing as, as a whole, is that we don't have the accountability. That's why main, main, main investors, you know, they're shining away from maybe trying to invest in our football or maybe try to chip into our football. So he told me that the bulk starts with us as Kenyans, as the stakeholders, and hopefully maybe in the near future, we'll be able to make uh, football business and uh, th actually that's what my company right now we are trying to do we are trying to maybe change some of these things so that in the next in the near future the guys we are working with definitely they'll be a good example to others Yvonne, I know there are plenty of untapped potential, especially at the grassroots, looking forward to, you know, venture into sporting activities and probably be a footballer, be a rugby star, be an athlete. But the way uh, the federations and the relevant sporting administrators locally are trying to manage the game, probably it might make them get scared of even uh, getting into the game. What, what should be done in the reference of how you indicated earlier, comparison of how uh, overseas teams, Man United, Barcelona are conducting themselves and how we need to conduct ourselves locally? Do you think there is huge disconnect? Um, yes. 
The, if you look at the top three clubs in Europe uh, uh, by the rankings that were released, I think should be a month ago. Um, of course, Man United has been on top of uh, those rankings for a while, but it's now been dethroned by Real Madrid. And then Barcelona coming in at second and Man United um, <coughs> coming in at third. Um, if you see the parameters that uh, are used to actually gauge the, um, the, the largeness or bigness, for lack of a better English word, of this English, uh, for, of these uh, football clubs, uh, sponsorship is just but a very little bit of what they used to to gauge if you look at uh, one of the parameters which is the valuation of the squad if you look at the player development system within all the three clubs whatever man one of the revenues um, that they most of the revenue that they make is by selling all these players who come through their system you find that almost between 10 to 15 percent of these players end up playing for the clubs themselves. But most of these players actually are outsourced by other institutions to play for them. Yeah? Another big, big aspect is infrastructure. Manchester United has the biggest uh, stadium uh, among all the English Premier League clubs. The membership of Manchester United is one of the most consistent. So it means the stadium will always be full throughout the season. So it means ticketing becomes an avenue for revenue generation. But if you look back at the bigger picture, the Old Trafford is an asset. The Old Trafford houses much more than just stadium uh, for where the, the, the fans can come and watch the game. If you look at all the parameters used to measure um, um, the, the big clubs, Sponsorship revenue or revenue generated from sponsorship is actually on the far end. In fact, it's usually the last thing that is looked at. So back coming back home, if the first person who has the contact with a player does not teach the player the proper skill set, even if people like Ronald or any other, we have, I think we have some intermediaries um, previously known as agents in Kenya also. Those agents will not have a player to showcase. If you look at what's happening, sometimes you go into our local league games and you look at the quality of football played and then you compare to the quality of football that you would see maybe Mtaani and you wonder where is the disconnect? You know, why is this brilliant kid here not playing in the, in the Premier League? You know, so the, starting from the first point of contact, in our system, we look at the PE teachers. It would change a great deal um, in terms of actually monetizing sports if the PE teacher had basic understanding of one aspect of sport. Uh, most of the unions, most of the fe uh, of the global federations have actually made level one coaching, um, it's, I think it's free and it's accessible even online. What if we had PE teachers with basic understanding of football? So that that brilliance, that passion in those mtas is actually nurtured in a way which uh, we're developing the next Harambe Stars player. You see, unfortunately for us, when we sell the football dream in the country, nobody's talking about, uh, I want to play for the Kenya Premier League. We do, in fact, we, 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 we look at it, if I'm not going to make it like Wanyama, I'm not, you see. That's why somebody like Olunga would come and play very few seasons and immediately want to go out, you know. Why aren't we making a league where players will want to stay, where they will want to continue competing because there's that opportunity or that pride associated with Harambe Stars, playing for the national team? All these small things that we do, and that's why when we say about the player development pathway, it's very basic. At five years old, you introduce the child to any type of ball. Any type of ball. Here, you're just playing for fun. At eight years old, now you start training to play. At eight years old, it means you should know whether a child loves football, basketball, rugby, likes to run, you know. So you are actually training to play. That means that if I'm playing rugby, I should know how to pass the right way. If I'm playing football, I should do, I should know the basics of football. If I'm playing basketball, same, you know. And then when we get to 12 years old, then now we actually train to compete. At 12 years old, the boys are separated from the girls. Now we are training. If it's football, we are outscoring the other team. You know, we are defending. We are not conceding any goals. Basic. At 16 years old, now you, you, you play to compete. You actually play to win. You train to win now. 
Now this one is becomes real. That's when all the leagues, you know, you, you, people talk about in in um, in countries like China, you're given um, you're given a milestone. We are meddling in the Youth Olympics. It's very straightforward. So basically, when you go through this um, pathway, up past 16 now you now you just have its performance stage. Now it's excellence. Now now you specialize in that particular event. That's a basic player development pathway. That was it's 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 a convince all sports. But now when you get into the discipline, now you customize for that discipline. What is very interesting is that the more you go along this pathway, the more people that will surround that one player. What are you creating? Careers. The careers. And of course, Ronald Ocott, speaking to you, there are plenty components of business uh, aspect of the sport. And we're going to uh, probably give reverence to football, one of the popular, uh, actually the most popular sporting disciplines. And one of the key components is self-empowerment of these teams, clubs, and uh, that can be achieved through membership fees. We've seen local yeah. clubs which enjoys huge support following in the country of Slippers and Gourmet Football Club, crying foul over, you know, financial instability. Players, welfare, allowances, salaries, dues, unaddressed. Coaching, leaving the clubs because their dues haven't been addressed. What can we do for self-sustainance, for the sake of, you know, stability at those particular clubs, especially community clubs that enjoy huge support following what can be done so that you know there is sort of membership fee that uh, can be channeled into you know several uh, uh, missions of the club so that there is stability at the club level i think uh, we have no short we have no shortcut or two way to this we just have to go back to the drawing board because most of our clubs um, unfortunately the way they're being run they're, they're being run by individuals or let me say they're being run by cartels and that's why we are seeing the leadership wrangles and all that and it's really affecting this club because if you look at uh, some of our big clubs they have the capability of maybe you know having their own stores where they can sell their own merchandise you yes. know having their own ticketing system where the, the same way karibangi shark is doing currently i think uh, we must give all the credit to Kar Karabang Shak because I think they're setting the pace properly from all the way from the structures in the youth academy even into the the senior team which we are seeing they're, they're currently arguably the some of the best teams that are playing the, the most beautiful football in Kenya Premier League right now Karabang Sharks and Mother United so to me our bigger teams we should just go back to the drawing board and maybe try to put in place the proper structures where, whereby these clubs you know can generate revenues in terms of ticketing in terms of maybe selling merchandise because as you speak right now if I, maybe i want to look for gurmaya jersey i don't know where to buy everyone is selling it actually yeah. they've not like uh, i think what we, what they need to do is like they should maybe try and pass a law or maybe they should try and maybe come up with better ways whereby only gurmaya branches or, or only gurmaya you know merchandise shops are allowed to maybe sell their merchandise everyone not just is selling because yeah. currently as you speak everyone is selling and you know yeah. the club is not making any money at all when yeah. it comes to all those ma yeah. selling merchandise and all that and also another thing is maybe the transfers we've seen very good players leave Gormaya on a free transfer just recently medica gary left Gormaya and went to simba and actually he's being paid much better playing at Simba than Gormaya and what he said personally he said that uh, they gave him a better offer and you can't tell me that a club like Gormaya can't afford to maybe take good care of Medica Gary if they brought uh, they brought to Isenge to to the Kenya Premier League for a tune of four million I mean whatever media I think asked would have been peanuts for them so to me I think they need to like uh, have proper ways whereby that at least they can generate their own revenue so that <coughs> they, they can play pay their players better they can you know take care of uh, build their facilities their stadiums and all that so that at the end of the day you know the club is the club that will benefit and they definitely promote the image of the kenya premier league if 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 i was to add on to that um yes. i think we need a clear set out a location of roles you see the issue comes when you try to do everything as an administrator there's no specialization there's no specialization you know so when we talk about a location of roles or specialization it simply means that the technical team sets targets you know, it says that we're going to win the Premier League, yeah? And the administration on the other end says, you know what, we're, our bonus structure is going to be best by results. It's a performance best bonus structure. Some of these things, if we had the specialists do them, it becomes a little bit easier. Because if, as a sports marketer right now, if I was told, um, you have a free card to handle Gomaia, 
there's so many merchants who are making gourmet merchandise you know on game day uh, you literally walk around the stadium you can buy 10 different <laughs> shirts the branding is also very different you know the only consistency is the colors of the club the yeah words. so many clubs make money out of royalty yeah instead of chasing away all those merchants because I cannot dictate as a club that I'm going to sell the merchandise, you know, because I'm adding a cost of rent, having uh, somewhere where I can hire, I have to get the right licenses, I have to get a team that will sell and everything. What I do, like Ronald mentioned before, is that I'm going to have every branch. If you know you're a merchant and you want to sell anything associated to Gormaya, please register with a certain branch, so that in any game that we are going to, if, if, if it's Kariobangi branch or Madare branch of Gormaya fan club, they'll say, we have merchant X, please allow them to the because you see what happens again is that the revenue that comes through that merchant being there ordinarily as an event organizer I would charge vending fee but so many of these merchants know almost all the the security guys at Kasarani or Nyayo all our biggest stadiums so even as a Gormaya official you have no clue how many people are in that place as vendors from the onset <laughs> and those two shillings, if you collect those two shillings from these vending fees, that's a lot of money. So that every branch, because the, the numbers are, are incredible for Gorma here as a club, yeah? So tell our members, you're supporting the club. So we're introducing a centralized system. We're in the digital age right now. Send our WhatsApp code. You know, all these uh, members are organized. All these funds are organized. Send our WhatsApp call, join. If it's a Telegram group or something, let's take contributions from every branch. A very minimal fee. What you'll find is that if there's a sub-branch somewhere where they have um, they have a certain business venture, let's say they make bread, now like when we had the Gormahia bread, Yes. if it was something, that shouldn't be a one-off thing. You get. So that if I'm a member of the club and I'm the chairman of the Madare sub-branch, I'm saying that our, um, our premiums to Gormahia club for association, because you know Gormahia is the brand. The brand has been made by the success on the pitch. The people who bring the success on the pitch is the technical team, which is led by the coach, implemented by the players. They need to eat. So why should I associate with Gormahia if I'm not contributing to the success on the pitch? So at top level, I should require premiums for anybody associating with my brand. If we were to bring statisticians, the, K, the, um, KMP, the K, KPMGs, PMG. they would give us a very high value of Gormaya. It means even for me to come on air with a gold jersey, I, ha I have to have consulted someone somewhere. But the Gormaya, the club, has to have that specialist. And, and are, we, are we isolating other sporting disciplines? Because in our, in our childhood life, we used to see, you see, boxing, it was a reputable sport in the country. A lot of, you know, people uh, participating, attracting interest from even the upcoming talent. But, you know, the standards have dwindled drastically. Talk of basketball, who's, uh, I think, several stakeholders of the game, the likes of Cynthia Mumba are trying to do their best to put structures in place to restore the lost glory of basketball. What are we, are we isolating those other sporting disciplines? Um, it's not isolation per se. Uh, even when we talk about speciality, um, we have the people who are good technically at this, you know. But what do they, they don't do is capacity building. Yeah? So when you go maybe for a boxing game, and you just, first thing you'll notice is almost all the officials are the age of your parents. <laughs> That's the first thing you will notice. <laughs> That's the first thing I assure you. There's so much boxing played. Like for instance, the Nairobi County um, Basket, uh, Boxing Association. Yes. It, it holds over 100 bouts in different weight categories, just in their league alone. We've not even come to the uh, Boxing Association of Kenya League. But you will go to this league, even some, uh, some novices are held in places without rings. Yeah? So imagine if there was a specialist so that you say, I want let the boxing, for me to be able to do my job as a sports marketer, let the boxing happen, but in a professional manner. Because if I bring brand X, if, this, if I'm provided uh, water by brand X, their brand cannot be associated with boxing that does not have a boxing ring. Are you getting? So these people uh, in that space, they go with the glory of yesteryears. You remember the last time we medaled? In fact, I wasn't even born when Wangila was, won, uh, yes. was winning the gold. Yeah? I will hear about Wangila in every sitting. I would go and, uh, and, and work with, because uh, I've worked with uh, both BAK and uh, the Kenya Professional yeah. Boxing Commission yes. at different capacities. But the same thing is like, oh, 
uh, young lady, you don't know boxing. You know, sisi tulikuwa wakati wanani, wanani, wanani. But you see, my work is not to know the boxing. My work is to find the opportunity within boxing to actually ensure the boxing continues. So it's not a matter of negligence. I think it's a mindset problem uh, where we refuse uh, some, some people. You see, unfortunately, not everyone can be uh, leaders. Most of the sports institutions are run politically. Personally, I'm not interested in politics. Like, I, I really do not care that much for politics. But the, I know there's an input that I can make. Ronald knows that there's an input he can make. But I can assure you, for him to walk into a boardroom uh, of, of any reputable football club, there'll be a lot of, you know, uh, leave it to us. There's all that reference always made, you know, in our years, in our years. We are not in those years. I know you formed Rosma Limited to advocate for the welfare of players, you know, teach them on media engagements, legal aspect of the game as well, trying to, you know, empower them with contractual obligations and what it means to uh, not to violate, you know, yeah. the contractual agreements. But as Yvonne puts it, like boxing, we've had rogue promoters. I in remember yeah. interviewing uh, the outgoing president of Kenya Bo uh, Professional Boxing Federation, Hilary Alila, and he said that uh, something that has been bringing the game in disrepute and bringing it down is rogue promoter. Someone organizing about, but you see the boxers themselves, who are an integral part of the game, not benefiting. How do we fight this cartel? Just like you indicated earlier, cartels are all over in football. <laughs> in yeah. basketball, yeah. in rugby, in athletics. And athletics has done brilliantly well. Maybe because it's a, an individual sport, unlike other disciplines, which are s sort of team sports. W what, what can we do with these cartels if we have to get our game to another level? I think uh, the first thing that the Federation did when they came into place was uh, to pass a law. I think, uh, it was they, I think it was something that during Nyamuya's time that was supposed to be passed whereby agents or maybe if you're, if you're interested to come in as an agent you must pay a certain fee and before I think it was around 20, 25 25,000 Kenya shillings, but right now it has been put to uh, almost 100, 100,000 Kenya shillings. And you know, it has been put in, it has been put in such a high amount there by at least they can now try to separate those guys who are serious and those who are not serious. And, and I think that's the, that's the best way to do. Plus, if you want to come into, to, to be like an agent, you must register with the federation. And I think that's only the best way that we can, you know, we can separate the cartels from those guys who are genuine. And that's why some of us, you know, we are trying to put these things to be openly so that at least everyone can know what we are doing, what we are offering, so that uh, you know. In the past, we've we've had players of going players going to Europe and then coming back, you know. And it's been a bit, it's been a very major problem because mm -hmm. some of these agents they're only interested, you know. They, they they put the money first. They don't put the players' welfare first. They're only interested in the money. They they see the players as their own asset for making money. And once they taken you somewhere, they dump you. Well, how you whether you're playing or not, they don't care. Whether you, how you're living. Do, 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 are you, do, you, do you need anything apart from just playing football? Do you want to go to school? Do you want to you know, get into get some sponsorship endorsement? They don't care about that. All to, to them, it's just about they get the money, the quick money, and they're done with you. And I think uh, it's high time that now we can also try, we, we should also try and maybe change how some of these things are done by trying to do things professional the way it's being done in Europe. And hopefully maybe in the next few years or so, the guys who we are already working with them this journey, probably I know, we will be changing some things. I was talking to a friend of mine, he's a former footballer, a man whose uh, uh, football career got crippled after getting injured. He's called Anthony Modo Kimani, played for FC Leopards, Mother United, doing very well with his car accessories business uh, located in Ngara. And you we were talking about uh, life after football, and it was a brilliant conversation. He's a man who's done exceptionally well uh, beyond football because he knew there has to be life after football and he put in place uh, mechanisms that will uh, enable him to be self-sustaining beyond football life. He's a pundit on TV, he's a businessman, he's you know, getting engaged in mentorship programs for the kids, for the talent. Rugby, you've been in rugby for quite long and rugby has plenty of professionals. Despite playing rugby as a sport, they are professionals, they have gone to school, they are career people. Do you think uh, other sporting disciplines will follow suit, football, athletics? Um, <clears throat> actually, um, to answer that question, I would like to take us back to um, uh, my initial comments. Um, when you look at the academy system that um, European clubs set up, 
um, what most people always forget is that um, only between 5 to 10 percent of the people in those academies actually end up playing football on the field. Yeah? What the academies create is an environment to nurture that interest or that passion that someone has in football. So what's happening within the rugby setup is that we have uh, professionals uh, in, in other fields who are within the rugby setup. So when you're in the rugby uh, space, then you're mentally aware that you know what, I can actually do what I love in rugby and I can actually get an income from something else. But not everyone has that benefit. You have to remember also not everyone can be able to afford um, some basic necessities like education and everything. Yes. So the, the, the environment that we need to create, and you remember I, I mentioned uh, the player development pathway, which will automatically translate to a career development pathway. In the next few years, we are going to have people who are going to love football are going to love basketball from a very young age and they are going to be able to be uh, exposed to this basketball. Yeah, They'll be exposed to this sport. This person will not be able to afford to go to school. But because uh, there's a coach who always comes every evening, the mom or the dad will allow them to go and play there. That environment should be complemented. By, the, by, by, by a career of somebody like a therapist. Within the life of a sports man or woman, just even not making the team to play the local league, it messes up your mind. Just not making the team, because you don't understand why. Yeah? In advanced countries, a coach can easily tell you your numbers are not good. Because when I'm training, my training is, my performance is tracked. You know? The therapist now, by the time you go and talk to the therapist, you, one player is surrounded by almost 12 different people. For me, my, 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 in my own opinion, uh, my, the world's best football player, Cristiano Ronaldo, has over 250 people who make him perform around him. That's around him. Mostly because he can afford, but secondly, because in, in going through the system, uh, being exposed in the professional setup, he understands that there are small boxes that need to be ticked for me to be able to achieve this one thing. Like one goal, and, and if you listen to most of his interviews, he'll always say it has been made by many people. It's not him alone. So when you come back right home, and talking about life after, that's not a thought that should come when you're almost retiring. In that setup, when your coach is dealing with you on the field, and you'll see, um, uh, you mentioned Cynthia Bombo before. She does a program called uh, Vicapo Elite Basketball. You don't just go for basketball at Vicapo Elite Basketball. There's a whole session on, uh, build, on, uh, on building yourself as an individual, on conducting yourself in a certain way, doing things in a certain manner. It opens up your mindset. They use the very same sport to actually um, nurture a holistic individual. That is the approach that anyone needs to use. So within the school systems, we've seen our primary school games and secondary school games. We see a lot of talent. But if we were to go back and actually analyze all that data, none of that talent is playing in our Premier League now. Yes. Of any discipline. None so there's of that. no follow-up. There's no follow-up. Yeah? Because somebody is also given a choice. You either go to school or you play this. But you see, if we have rugby players who are able to do both, then what is stopping a football player from doing the same? And, and when, when Yvonne is talking about the branding aspect of a player like Cristiano Ronaldo, yeah. who's, who gets motivated by over 240 million people when he's on the pitch, you are tweeting something about, you know, uh, profile uh, of Kenyan players and <laughs> how they call themselves on social media. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think we've gotten it wrong when it comes to that? Uh, definitely, we've, we've gotten it wrong because if you look at the, our current crop of players, uh, I, I mean, I'm sorry to say, most of them, they don't consider themselves as brands. You know, they don't want to take advantage of the fact that they're playing professional football in our league and uh, if you look at the type of names that they're using on the social media one is calling himself messi alves some funny funny names they <laughs> even call themselves vibes cartel and you're a football player so you know it even beats the f it even beats the fact that uh, some of us okay like sh le let me say for myself i'm right uh, right now I'm, I'm involved in sports management and the clans i'm working with well some of them i also got them using the same names but i told them you know guys we have a long-term plan the things we want to achieve. We want to get you guys sponsorship endorsements, you know, we want to brand you, you guys as serious professional players. The things that you must change, you must have a serious 
social media presence and profile. That at least even when a coach looks at your uh, as at your social media or at your profile, at least he can say that you know this guy plays plays football. But unfortunately for our players, I think it's still something that you know, uh, just like Yvonne said, it's. it's it's in the mindset. They, we just have to change some of these things because we've even seen former Kenyan internationals. Some of them are still using nicknames. Just the other day, we had uh, we were having a very heated discussion with the Bon, bon Fasambani and a former Kenyan international who uses his nickname. Bon Fasambani was saying that you know it's high time Kenyan footballers start using their own names. They start pre presenting themselves as serious professionals. And the former Kenyan international said that stop stop lying these youngsters let them use the nicknames they want i used my nickname and i'm still famous being referred to by my nickname so and it's so unfortunate because you know this is these are the guys who are supposed to be guiding to be mentoring and to be you know teaching these people how to present themselves present this themselves as serious professionals and uh, hopefully maybe it's something that will be changing that in the near future overall your parting shot as we wind up yvonne the Marketing branding aspect of the game going forward, Kenya getting to another level, it's retrogressive. World and 18 Championship happened in Kenya in 2018. It was a fantastic, successful event, crowded, you know, uh, Kasarani Stadium being filled to the rafters. Under 20 is coming to Kenya again in 2020. There is this something that has been scaring fans to go to the stadium. Like if you speak to my friend Joe Saina here, he will tell you that he can't go to <laughs> Nyayo National Stadium to watch a game between Madara United and Western Steamer because there is no value and that's why we've seen several kenyan football fans you know giving priority to english premier league football european mm. football mm. in general like one day nicolas musonye secretary general of sekafa complained kenya sekafa is getting staged at nyaya national stadium but you see there's a fan who is in a local joint at nairobi west following keenly a match between huddersfield and arsenal at the expense of coming to nyaya to watch kenya play mm. sudan mm. what should we do in your overall, you know, parting shot. <laughs> First is to tell you we need more time. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So you can, you, I think you should dedicate the next touchline or the next few touchlines specifically for this. Definitely. Um, uh, You've mentioned uh, World Under-18 Championships and also the English Premier League. Yes. Um, my parting shot would be that um, there is an urgent need for the policy makers to also be involved in uh, actually um, enforcing or rather spearheading the campaign towards having a healthy sports ecosystem. Um, the success of the English Premier League, uh, the English Premier League clubs actually benefit a lot from uh, broadcast, the money that comes in that uh, acquired through broadcast rights. Uh, what most people don't know is that the game changer was actually um, a law that was passed about broadcasting games during certain times. Like on the weekends, there on Saturday afternoon, there will be no TV showing any game. You won't see at least not the Premier League. You know. So um, there's an there's a need for policy actually to stop shunning away from sports, you know, to stop taking it as a joke. If it starts, it, there's a bottom-up approach and there's also an up-bottom um, approach, a top-bottom approach, but all of them need to go concurrently so that we're ticking the small boxes. So my parting shot is that um, as we, uh, as, as stakeholders in the sport from um, a commercial angle, then we would like to actually encourage that from the policy makers, the people who make the decisions up there, they need to encourage a sporting ecosystem with the, so that we get away and encourage more participation and following of the sport. Fashionista, your final word. I know you're regretting because during your heydays, the national team Arambe Stars didn't qualify to African <laughs> Cup of Nations and you are wishing probably you are still playing football so that you represent the country during the prestigious continental <laughs> show piece. It's happening later this year in Egypt. Yeah. Uh, that should be uh, a game changer for football because it will give our players an exposure and sort of you know a platform that probably in case some of them showcases their prowess they can get noticed overseas yeah it's that's a big plus for the game it's a big plus for, for the game because uh, this is the first time you're qualified for the afghan in over 14 is 15, it 15, years. 15 years and i think that's a big achievement and uh, probably that's the the, the highlight of my year last year and also this year because we are going to see Kenya uh, 
play in the AFCON and it's a good step and also it's a good platform for most of our professionals who will be playing who will be who who'll have made the cut who will who, have made the who will have met the threshold of maybe being called into the national team because that's another opportunity for them to market themselves in Africa to make a to make a name for themselves to announce themselves in the big stage and you know this is, this is a type of tournament that many scouts are watching many you know agents are watching and many clubs are looking for players recruiting recruiting players left right and center and this is the best chance for them you know to also prove themselves that they can play the play against the big boys and definitely earn themselves a contract but just going into the AFCON itself it doesn't matter whether we'll be knocked out in the first round or, or, or so it's just a big plus for us thank you for coming through Yvonne Namaya reputable sports marketer and Ronald Okoth uh, CEO Rosma Limited you know I interviewed this guy when we were just starting the show I think earlier last year when we were 254 <laughs> I'd just pioneered and he was just a mere pundit right now he's a CEO <laughs> of a company come on ah, and i'm still here as a journalist talking about these things anyway we're always building people right yeah uh, thank you thank man. you for coming through Yvonne. of course we're going to continue with this conversation in our subsequent programming sports marketing sports business and even branding aspect of the game right yes thank you for coming through of course the conversation continues touchline continues don't go away stay tuned we're coming up next with the fans on i can see big men are already in studio we're going to be joining uh, discussing matters international football with focus on transfers, fixtures, Arsenal, Man City tomorrow, Sunday, Super Sunday, cut and raised by Man United against Leicester. But before that, let's look at what happened during the midweek. The highlights of what happened, Man United uh, drawing against Burnley, Manchester City getting upsetted by Newcastle United, Chelsea getting thrashed by Bournemouth. Let's look at those highlights, then we will be back shortly in a few.